Hello! So, in today's video, we will talk about blood pressure concepts and hypertension pathophysiology. So, like we talked in the last video, first of all, it's very, very important to understand um, the hypertension pathophysiology and the blood pressure concepts before jumping into understanding the pharmacology of the antihypertensive. So, that's the today's uh, challenge. Let's go for it. Um, so, blood pressure. Our heart is responsible for pumping blood through our system. Specifically, the left ventricle will contract and make our blood to go through our body. And it's important that it can reach all our body, all our tissues, so everything gets the oxygen and nutrients it needs. So, blood pressure is a good thing when in balanced values. So, when the ventricle pumps, then we'll have a, a certain pressure, normally around 120 millimeters of mercury, that makes the blood go into uh, our body, and that's called the systolic blood pressure. And then the ventricle will relax after pumping the blood, and then we'll have the pressure, uh, diastolic pressure, which is normally, in uh, normal values, 80 millimeters uh, of mercury, so our blood pressure should be something under the values of 120 millimeters over 80 systolic and diastolic blood pressure. But the problem arises when this pressure is higher than those values. So when it's higher than 140 and uh, under higher than 90 millimeters of mercury, then we have a hypertension problem. So Let's understand what are the factors that can make this problem happen. So, which factors impact on the blood pressure? So, the blood pressure is dependent on two main factors. On the cardiac output and on the second one, on the systemic vascular resistance. So, the first one, cardiac output, basically it is the amount of blood or the volume of blood that is pumped through our body in one minute. So, basically, uh, the cardiac output is the stroke volume times the heart rate. So, the stroke volume is the amount of uh, blood that is pumped in one contraction and the heart rate is the amount of contractions in one minute so all together the cardiac output is the amount of blood that is pumped into our body in one minute and normally our uh, cardiac output is around 5 liters and lately uh, after all we have the systemic vascular resistant which is basically the resistant the resistance that the blood encounters when it keeps flowing through our um, vessels so the resistance uh, can be higher if for example a blood vessel is more narrow or a, a resistance can be higher if the blood viscosity is uh, higher as well. So if the blood contains many many cholesterol then it's more viscous so the resistance is higher so the blood pressure is higher. So in general terms this is the most important to understand because then we'll have um, drugs that will uh, basically act in the different parts that impact in the blood pressure uh, ultimately. So for example, we'll have drugs that will act in the blood volume which is for example the HCE inhibitors, the diuretics that make us pee out some water and some salt so then the volume is uh, lower and the blood pressure is lowered. Then we have uh, drugs that will impact in the heart rate so basically, for example, the beta blockers, they inhibit our heart from pumping uh, so many times, so it reduces the heart rate, so our blood pressure is also reduced. Uh, we've got drugs that inter interact uh, in the contrability system. So for example, we have calcium channel blockers that 
in summary, they re block the calcium to enter the muscles so they do not contract. Uh, so then our blood pressure is reduced as well. And then we have, for example, vasodilators, which will impact on the systemic vascular resistance. So the vasodilators, they make our blood vessels to uh, relax and then our blood pressure is also lowered. That's pretty much it uh, in terms of factors that impact on the blood pressure. Then it's very, very important to understand uh, two different types of hypertension. There is the primary hypertension and the secondary hypertension. So on the primary hypertension, primary hypertension, normally there is uh, no uh, known underlying disease to cause it. So unknown cause. Whilst we have a secondary hypertension, and this secondary hypertension, normally we, there is a cause behind it that causes the blood pressure to increase. So, there, for example, we can have a kidney disease that makes our um, blood pressure to go higher, and uh, basically. The primary hypertension is the most common one, more than 90% of the cases, whilst uh, the secondary hypertension is the less frequent, is 10% of the cases. But the secondary uh, hypertension should be forgotten, especially for children, because many times children have got a high blood pressure because they have a kidney problem behind it or any other problem. But that also can be uh, said for adults, even though adults normally they have a primary hypertension. That being said, it's also very very important to understand that some drugs they can make our blood pressure to go higher as well. So there are certain drugs that because of their mechanism of action they make our blood pressure to go higher as well. So also drugs can cause hypertension. So we'll in the next videos talk about the drugs that decrease the hypertension, they are anti-hypertensive drugs, but there are drugs that do the opposite and they should be taken into account. So uh, they are, for example, corticosteroid drugs, they can make the hypertension go higher, non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, for example, ibuprofen, naproxen, um, all those, oral contraceptive, So that's why the ladies, when they are put on the pill, they need to have regular blood uh, pressure checks in order to keep going, to make sure the blood pressure is not rising too much. We've got also, for example, venlafaxine, which is um, antidepressant. We've got the congestants that can increase the blood pressure as well. We've got the recreational drugs such as cocaine, amphetamines, they can increase uh, the blood pressure as well. But let's look into the most common uh, case, which is the NSAIDs. So, as we know, the NSAIDs or the non steroidal anti inflammatories, they act by blocking the production of uh, prostaglandins. So, the prostaglandins, we know that they do vasodilation. So, if they are blocked, then we have vasoconstriction which means the vessels they are narrow so there needs to be more uh, pressure there, there is a, a, a bigger resistance so a bigger systemic vascular resistance and then ultimately there is a bigger blood pressure so simply by changing uh, sometimes ibuprofen or naproxen by paracetamol then we solve a blood pressure uh, problem and also it's that's the reason why uh, on patients that suffer from hypertension we don't recommend as first line uh, a non steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, for their uh, conditions. We try to avoid it. Alright, so that's pretty much it for today's video. This video is part of the Easy Peasy Pharmacology book which I will link down below if you want to have a look. 
into it and many thanks for your time. Bye!